In this general impedance converter, we want to show this interesting relationship that Z in, or input impedance as shown here, has this conversion relationship with ZL, basically with, with proper selection of Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, which are four impedances that we can set in this circuit, you can convert or transform ZL to ZN, and you can effectively realize either capacitor to inductor converter, or you can realize negative impedance converter, NIC, uh, by properly selecting Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4 values. Okay, VIN comes in at input, goes to the positive input terminal, so VIN appears here. Assuming that op amp 2 is properly biased, so supply voltages are properly there, and assuming this ideal op amp is in linear region of operation, meaning that negative feedback is dominant, uh, then because of that, it's not saturated, virtual short is valid, V plus should be equal to V minus for the two input terminals of the op amp. If V in is, is appearing at the positive input terminal, V in should be at negative input terminal as well. As a result, uh, V in should be here as well. And for the same reason, if this op amp number one is also properly biased and in linear region of operation, therefore visual short should be valid. If V in appear at negative input terminal, V in should be at the positive input terminal as well, as long as the circuit is stable and negative feedback is dominant. If this is the case, then we have an interesting outcome. V in appears at the output. So V in is across the CL and uh, we have this interesting property that I2 that goes to the ZL. Uh, so we have this property that VN should be equal to I2 times ZL. So let's name this equation number one. Obviously, uh, we have by definition of ZN, ZN should be equal to VN divided by the input current, so let's say I in. So I can say, for the same reason, uh, at input, you can say that uh, Vn should be equal to I in times Zn. That's by definition of input impedance. So that's equation number two. OK, so keep this. Now, V in appeared here. Let's name this node as Vx, voltage for this node. Let's name the voltage at this node as Vy. Um, so this I2 that goes here, that it cannot go through the input in terminal of op amp. Ideal op amp has infinite input impedance. So no current can flow through the positive. No current can flow through the negative input terminal. The same thing for the op amp number two. No current can go this way. No current can go this way. So therefore, I2 goes this way. I2 goes through Z4 as well. That we know. Now, whatever Ix is going this way through Z3, that Ix cannot go through negative input terminals of these op amps, so has to flow through Z2 as well. So that is also Ix. All right. Now, one interesting thing is, as you can see, voltage here is Vn. It drops to Vx. And then voltage here is also Vn. And it drops when the current I in comes in. When the current I in comes in, you can see that V in gets to Vx. So the voltage drop across Z1 and Z2 is the same thing. So you can say V in minus Vx is equal to Z1 times I in is equal to Z2 times Ix. So one conclusion here that I have is this interesting outcome that Ix is equal to Z1 over Z2 times I in. Okay, so let's keep this as equation number three. Uh, for the same reason, you can see that from this node, Vy, we have a drop across Z4, we get to Vn, or if we go left side, we have a drop across Z3 and we, go, we get to Vn again. So the voltage drop across Z3 and Z4 should be the same. So I can say Vy minus Vn, voltage drop across these two resistors, should be equal to either uh, Ix times Z3 or either I2 times Z4. So using these two, I can just write that I2 
is equal to z3 divided by z4 times ix. Uh, this is equation number 5, 4, and combining uh, 3 and 4, we get, combining 3 and 4, we get i2 equal to z3 divided by z4 times z1 divided by z2 times ix um, times, uh, I, uh, times i in, so times i in. And uh, this is equation number 5. And now, finally, if we plug in from uh, 2 and 1 into number 5, so using equation 1 and 2, what we get is Vn divided by Zl, that's sub substitution for I2, equal to Z3 over Z4 times Z1 divided by Z2. I in also substituted from equation 2, so it's Vn divided by Zn, and now V in cancel out. As a result, we get to what we wanted. So we get to Zn equal to Z3 divided by Z4 times. Uh, we get to Z1 divided by Z2 times Zl. And that's the final equation we were looking for to find. So this is the outcome we wanted. And in this case, by properly selecting the value of z1, z2, z3, z4, we can realize a lot of possibility. For example, if zl, z1, z3, z4 are resistor and z2 is capacitor, then we can realize an inductance from perspective of z in and vice versa.